Hey guys, I'm just using the 5 here, and today I will be doing a review of the 75280 501st Legion Clone Troopers, aka 501st Battle Pack from the LEGO Star Wars line. This set released in the summer of 2020, around August, um, I believe mid-August was when this thing came out. It was slated to come out August 1st, I believe, but due to um, some fun world events, it was pushed back a little bit. Um, and it, since it has come out, this has been quite a hard set to get a hold of. This set retails for $30 in the United States and contains 285 pieces. And if you want one of these, um, good luck getting your hands on them because these sets are not easy to come by, at least right now. Hopefully that will get better in the future, but with, anyways, with that, with that out of the way, let's get into the review. As far as the box of the set is concerned, it is a fairly standard LEGO set box. It is open with the two whole thumb tabs in the back. Um, you can play it in the LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga game, which as far as I'm aware has been delayed till 2021, so I have to wait a bit on that one. Um, and the box is quite thin. Um, I believe this is the kind of standard set size for $30 sets at this point. At least it was, I believe, the same size as the last $30 ATRT set we had last year. Um, but other than that, there's not really anything wrong with this box to point out. Included in the set is the box, the instruction manual, the sticker sheet, and two numbered bags of pieces. For the instructions in the sticker sheet, we'll first take a look at the sticker sheet. Here it is as presented in the box. It is not folded or anything in the box, which is nice. There are a grand total of 10 unique stickers included in the sticker sheet with 11 total stickers. So quite a few for a $30 set, but um, hopefully these won't be too bad to apply. So that's pretty much all for that. It's not bent, so I don't really have any complaints outside of the number of stickers. Um, and then here for this set here, we have the instruction manual. It does have the instructions plus QR code right here. Um, but other than that, it is a standard instruction manual, and there's nothing really to report out of the ordinary about that. So overall, um, neither of these were bent in the box, so I can't complain too much about either of them. So let's move on now to the next part of this review, which will be looking at the builds in this set. This set has two builds in it, being a Bark Speeder and a 501st ATRT. So we're going to take a look at these. Um, I will take a look at the Bark Speeder first of the two builds. Um, so now let me screw with the camera a bit, just so we can get a better look at it. So just looking at it from a couple different angles, then we'll take a look at some of the play features. And of course you can see um, there are a couple stickers on this thing. Mostly on this piece right here, as you can probably tell, is where most of the stickers from this set ended up. Um, at least for one piece. I think this piece has three stickers on it, and that's the most out of any piece in this set, but there's also another sticker right here on the front. So, as far as play features go for this particular vehicle, um, you're, you are somewhat limited here in what you get. Um, you do have stud shooters here in the front, and there's one on each side. Um, I don't think I need to really explain in great depth how stud shooters work, but, you know, press down on the dark gray bit. Then it fires the stud out. Um, it does include one extra for each stud shooter as well as another extra of the re dark red or just regular red not dark red transparent studs uh, but i would recommend that you try not to lose the ones they give you initially so that's pretty much that stud shooters are pretty standard by now um, and then as of course moving back you do have the seat and this is where you can sit in one of your 501st clone troopers um, so as far as that goes um, he is seated on two studs back here um, this is one of the kind of tile tile plate combo pieces um, and that is fairly simple. You just bend his legs like that, um, and you can sit him down. If you want him to lean back, you do have to kind of hold his legs down while you push him backwards, and then you grab one of these control yokes um, right there. And if you don't have a blaster in his other hand, you can also grab this one. Um, but there is no place on the vehicle that I have found for him to stick his blaster, so you're probably going to have him hold on to it. And of course, these little pieces right here, the little veins, are actually made with blaster pieces, so cool good job lego nice parts usage on that one um, and also one other thing i will point out about this particular vehicle is that the ski piece um, that we have gotten used to seeing on bark speeders is actually a different variant of the piece um, as you guys would probably know i don't know actually if i have one of the old ones on hand let me check but there is a slight difference between the new piece and the old piece yes i do have one of the old pieces so this was the old piece um, as you can see, it has this little part back here, which was used for some older Lego parts. You could clip stuff in between here. Um, and of course, the new variant does not have that, so that's what's going on with that piece. Um, so I get why they have removed that. Um, yeah, sorry, I bumped the camera while getting, getting back into the recording area. But um, yeah, that is a change they have made 
to that piece. Um, very interesting. I don't know if that was the most pressing change that needed to happen um, for a lot of LEGO stuff going forward, but I guess it's cool that they have made this piece more modern, um, even though to me it wasn't a big deal, but, you know, cool they did it, I guess. Um, so as far as the vehicle goes, um, obviously you're kind of limited on play features. Those are actually all the play features you get with this one. Um, there are no slider plates underneath this vehicle, so if you are going to be sliding it around like a bark speeder would, you are going to be scratching up whatever surface you're going to be working with. Um, so that is kind of unfortunate. Um, but other than that, you know, obviously limited play features, but I don't think that this build looks very bad. There aren't any really exposed colors that you're not supposed to see in this set. Um, mostly just because the build is so small, and that's similar with the ATRT that we're going to take a look at next, is that pretty much all the pieces that make the build are exposed, so they didn't really have room to shoe in random colored pieces like they would to help you build it, so it is what it is. Um, but that is the Bark Speeder. Um, you know, a little light on play features, a little heavy on stickers, um, especially this piece right here. There are three stickers on this, um, but overall I think they've done a decent job here representing this vehicle. So now we'll take a look at the ATRT, and I'm going to have to mess with the camera again because this is a very, very tall vehicle. Um, so yeah, this is the ATRT. I guess we'll start at the bottom here. You can see the legs here. Um, and these are a bit smaller feet than past versions of this build that we've had most recently. Um, but it is a different design than the previous two, so that is cool. We get a new design here. Um, and as far as leg articulation goes, you have three points of leg articulation, which are all these ratcheting hinge joints um, like this. One in the foot, one in the knee, and then one right here where it connects up to the torso or the body of this vehicle. So you get... Nice bit of articulation, and you also do have toe articulation in this one, which I don't know if this was intentional, um, but it doesn't really do much for necessarily um, stability, but it is nice for posability. So as far as trying to get some poses out of this thing, um, you, three points of articulation, you can get it to do some walking poses like that. I'm sure if we mess with this a bit more, we can get some other poses as well. Um, but yeah, you can get some decent walking poses out of this, so overall I think stability for this is probably probably one of the better um, stabilized ATRTs of this scale, actually, now that I think about it. Um, but you do have some options as far as posing this thing um, and messing with it and playing with it. So moving up from there, um, you obviously do have stickers right here, but anyway, moving up from there onto kind of the top head of the walk or kind of the cockpit area. Um, as far as play features go, um, you do have a single stud shooter where the cannon is, um, and they have chosen to take off pretty much all of the cannon and just leave the stud shooter on, which is a weird decision. Um, and I'm not going to shoot this off because you just saw with the bark speeder how the stud shooters work, um, but this is on a ball joint, so you can move it around, angle it however you want, flip it around, you know, do all kinds of crazy things, and there's a bunch of stickers on the front of this thing. Um, there's one, two, three, four, five right there, um, and then of course these flaps um, are angleable, so you can do whatever you want with those, as well as this top little bit here can be angled up and down independently, um, and that will move the top two flaps with it as well. Um, so that's pretty neat, um, and then moving back here a bit, you can get into a bit more of the cockpit stuff, you can see one of these printed 1x2 cheese slope console pieces right here is right in front of the cockpit area, so you can do some stuff with that if you want to. Um, and it also does have the handlebar piece here for some control. Um, again, this uh, this space is two studs in the back, um, though it does not use the same piece as the bark speeder does, um, but it is similar in function, so you can take one of your clone troopers um, and sit them down in there, like so, and then yeah, lean him back a bit, and then we can probably get him to grab onto those handlebars. Come on. Yeah, there we go. All right, cool. So he has gotten those handlebars now, um, and he is in control of the walker. As far as things back here go, um, you do have two clips to store things. Um, one has micro binoculars on it, and the other one you can stick the 501st Troopers blaster into, so that's cool. And then you do have these two antenna back here, um, which can be put down like so for storage or whatever, or you can flip them up for use like this. So those are actually all of the play features um, for this vehicle in particular. Um, overall, um, the scale is, you know, again, the ATRT is a small vehicle, um, but they do do these larger blown up ones for whatever reason. 
Um, so as far as this goes, um, these, this is definitely one of the smaller of the larger versions of this vehicle, so it is technically closer to the correct scale than a lot of the other ones. Um, but still, it is pretty big out, as far as out of scale goes. I think that if you had one of these in scale, it would probably be about as tall as where the legs meet the rest of the walkers. So um, probably that would be the max height on this thing. But still, it is a lot better as far as size go than a lot of these larger versions of the same vehicle as far as accuracy. Um, but as far as comparing to the other ones, um, you do get a lot more detail out of those than I think you've gotten out of this. And they did manage to cram quite a lot of detail into here, well, obviously using some stickers in a couple of places. But still, they managed to do quite a lot of stuff here. Um, and as far as the playability goes, obviously, um, as far as, you know, stud shooter works, but they lobbed off most of the cannon that makes the thing look good. Um, and you can get quite a lot out of the legs too, so not really... All all things considered, not too much to complain about. Still some things that could be better, but not too much to complain about really with either of these vehicles. So, um, now that we've taken a look at those, let's take a look at the figures included in this set. For figures in this set, there are six total figures. Um, of course, only three unique figures though. The figures you get duplicates of are the 501st Trooper, and you do get three of them total. You get two with the blaster of just the normal size and you do have one with this elongated rifle with the candlestick piece on the end which is kind of a nice inclusion so pretty cool um, and then the other figure you do get a duplicate of is the battle droid and you just get two of those guys so pretty cool but these are all of the unique figures in this set so we'll just take a look at these guys right now so as far as the battle droid goes let's just get him out of the way first um, there's nothing out of the ordinary about this battle droid. It is the typical battle droid that we have seen since, I believe, 2007 when they introduced the straight arm piece. Um, so, pretty cool. Um, yeah, the arm that allows him to hold the blaster is the turned arm piece. Um, the unbent one, because this is definitely a bent arm, but this is a straight arm with a turned hand, so cool. Um, he can hold the blaster, um, so that's nice. As far as the other two clone trooper figures here, you can see on the front that they do have quite a lot of printing. Um, there is no waste printing for either of these, or hip printing right here, as you can see. Um, they just have pl blank white hip pieces, um, which is kind of strange. Um, tr traditionally, we're used to seeing black hips on the clone troopers to kind of break between the legs and the torso, um, but that is not what we have in this case. I mean, if I am to kind of rotate the legs, you can see that there is a bit of that right on the legs printed like that, but still, um, not very much of it. Um, and there is some, because this is a new clone design for the Phase 2 Troopers, there is kind of some controversy and different opinions over whether or not this is a good change. Personally, I prefer the black hips to kind of break the figure down into more manageable, kind of digestible areas as far as printing goes, but I can see why somebody would like the white hips, because technically they are more accurate than the black ones. Um, the black hips are kind of meant to represent kind of the black under, under portions of their armor that show through in a couple places. But of course, um, the white is more predominant there, so um, that technically that is more accurate, but personally I still like the black hit piece there instead. Um, moving up to the torsos, you can see two different torso prints. Um, I think both these are pretty decent. Um, there are a couple um, design inconsistencies between these clones and older versions of the troopers. Um, but ultimately, um, they are very minor, and really I don't think most people will care enough about them um, to really notice. Um, I believe, for example, one of those, I don't, I, don't, I don't know the exact thing, but I know there's something wrong with this right here um, as far as inconsistencies go um, between that and the older version of the figure, um, I believe the 2014 one. Um, I don't know if I can pull one out. Uh, I don't think I can right now, but... Um, there is a bit of different printing and consistency right here, um, and as far as the jetpack 501st Trooper, um, there is a little blue line right under this red part, red kind of arrow on the helmet. I'm going to zoom into that, see if I can get you guys to see it. Whoa, it does not want to focus. Come on. Come on, camera. Okay, well this is very interesting looking. Um... Yeah, you can see it right there, there's that little blue line. Um, beneath the black line separating kind of the top of the helmet from the visor and stuff. Um, and that is not supposed to be there um, on the actual cannon um, armor of the clone trooper. But other than that, um, these guys are pretty good. Um, so overall, you know, they've done a decent job of replicating these guys in the kind of Lego minifigure style. 
Um, as far as um, back printing goes, we'll take a look at that um, after we do the helmets because there is a jetpack on the jetpack trooper and it is a nice blue one, so pretty cool. Um, we'll take a look at the back printing in a second in more detail. Um, and as far as the helmets go, these are new designs as well. Um, and I think personally, um, they do look a little strange to me, um, being that the shadow kind of there is done in blue for the jet trooper and it is definitely a darker gray than it has been in the past on the 501st trooper where they've done kind of the darker printing to kind of give the 3D effect. Um, and you know, I'm a bit on the fence about that personally. Um, I think that is something they should include, but I think they've defined it a bit too much on these new helmets um, for my personal liking, but I don't think it's a big enough issue to like not collect the troopers or anything. Um, so taking off the helmets, we are going to be greeted to a welcome surprise because these are actually not clone troopers that are using the angry clone face print. Um, it seems that they've actually done away with that now, and we now have a slightly more accurate head and a slightly more accurate flesh tone for the clone troopers um, because the regular kind of pale flesh tone that they had been using in the past was not the most accurate, and I believe this is actually closer to where they're supposed to be. And they do have kind of a neutral expression like they did for the original Clone Wars style of kind of the regular clone face. Without the crazy eyes, of course, but um, I think they've done a really good job on this. Um, I think this is probably um, as close as they probably need to get to, as far as getting the clone face accurate as I really care about. Um, you know, the flesh tone is pretty much spot on. Um, you know, it might be a bit more orange than... <laughs> The actual clones are but I think it's pretty spot-on overall generally speaking um, and you know the expression is neutral so it's not anything like crazy so I think they've done a really good job on this so um, I'm actually going to now remove the head of the jetpack troopers so that we can take the jetpack off so we can get a better look at the back printing um, for this figure um, but it is just the standard jetpack in blue so you know pretty cool but um, nothing too crazy um, so looking at the back printing for these figures um, it is nothing too crazy, in my opinion. Um, pretty much just the same on both of them, except that the Jet Trooper has a little bit of extra blue. Um, so, again, I think they've done a decent job here. You know, the printing is not of poor quality, so nothing to complain about. Um, and really, that kind of sums up these guys pretty well. Um, they've definitely made some changes to the Clone Trooper figures um, with this new um, Season 7 of the Clone Wars coming out, of course. Um, and, you know, some of those are welcome changes. Um, like the added printing and the new clone face and then some of those I think could definitely use some improvement like the shadow printing or depth printing on the helmet um, as well as a couple other areas that I've mentioned um, but you know overall I think they've done a really good job on these guys um, and the blue arms on the jet trooper work pretty nice um, the one thing that some people have been talking about wanting is wanting dual molded what blue top white bottom arms for the kind of shoulder pads that the 501st troopers have where it's kind of like blue right up at the shoulder and then it's white the rest of the way down um, and you know that would be cool um, but I think that this is fine honestly um, I don't think we really need that and I don't know if it would look much better on these figures um, personally I'm fine with it but I'm sure that there are people who want to see that still so um, overall I can't really complain too much about these figures definitely there are some things that could be better but overall I think they've done a pretty decent job here of getting these guys right so now let's go and conclude this review so in conclusion and summary of this review as far as the box instructions and sticker sheet go I don't really have any real complaints there were quite a few stickers in the set for the size but nothing that cannot be gotten past in building the set um, I will say most of these stickers in this set are pretty necessary to accomplish the look of this set. You know, some definitely more than others, like a lot of the stuff on the front of here, versus, you know, maybe you don't need this blue stripe right here, or these little stickers on the legs. Um, but if you are going to have to choose, I would say you're probably better putting the stickers on this set. Um, as far as the builds go, um, you know, they're nice. Um, for a $30 set, having two builds is cool. Um, they are definitely less substantive in some ways than I would expect. Um, like, for example... This build right here has definitely taken a hit for the ATRT versus past $30 ATRT sets um, and adding this larger bark speeder, which I think out of the two, um, this probably should have been the more substantive build, but for me, this kind of feels like it took more of the build spotlight than the ATRT should have, um, which is kind of strange. Um, I feel like they made the bark speeder too big and the ATRT a bit too small, even though the ATRT in universe is actually a smaller vehicle and it's probably closer to the Bark Speeder in universe, but as far as past Lego sets go, you know, that's kind of how I feel. Um, but, you know, you're welcome to have your own opinion. And as far as the figures for this set go, you do get six in a $30 set, which is pretty cool. 
Um, the 501st Troopers and the Jet Trooper, I think, are pretty solid. Um, they are in a new style, um, which is kind of strange. Um, they switch up styles every couple of years, um, so not entirely surprising that they've changed the style. Um, but I know that a lot of the people wanted to see 501st Troopers in the 2013-2014 style that we've had for the last few years. And now, of course, that they've done this, it's in a new style, and that's not the case anymore. So, um, yeah, kind of disappointing. There is definitely some room for growth in this new style, and like we pointed out in the figure looking at section, um, you know, the depth line, the depth printing in gray on some of the helmets could use some work as well as there are some slight inaccuracies in the troopers. But overall, nothing that really breaks the deal, um, in my opinion. All of those are pretty minor things. And of course, battle droids are battle droids, so what are you going to do? They're cool to see because the other set that came out alongside this, the AAT, has the AAT driver battle droids in it. So cool to see some regular battle droids making their way into LEGO sets once again. So as far as um, value for this set goes, um, this is a 285 piece set, so evaluating this set purely on price per part, I think you'd be pretty fair in saying this would be a $30 set based upon that valuation metric. Um, you know, personally, um, as far as volume and looking at this set, um, and just purely thinking about what this set is made up of, um, this is colloqu colloquially referred to as the 501st Battle Pack. Um, of course, we all know, I'm pretty sure most of us know the story behind how this set came to be. Um, so, with that said, this is basically um, some slightly bigger battle pack builds um, with si six figures, which is two and a half, which is one and a half battle packs worth of figures. Um, so, as far as value goes, um, in that respect, I'd probably say this set lands a bit closer to twenty-five dollars. Um, you know maybe even $20 if they were still selling battle packs for $10, which is, I think, the price they should be sold at, personally. Um, of course, inflation, now $15 makes a bit more sense than that. So, based on that argument, um, probably $25 would be about what I would expect for this set. Um, and being that it is $30, that's not too badly priced for what you get, but at the same time, it definitely is not priced ideally. Um, so if you can find this set for less than $30, um, if you can find this set at all, though, I would recommend picking it up, especially if you want some 501st Troopers. Um, the one thing I will say as far as whether or not you should pick this set up is that if you are a scalper and you are purely picking this set up from local stores or Lego stores or ordering it online purely to resell it, um, please stop. This set is very hard to find, and I'm sure that a lot of people who are not, who actually want to buy this set to actually have this set and play with it and add it to their collection, um, cannot do so because a lot of people who are scalpers and resellers are buying these sets um, pretty much all of the stock that they have immediately when they come out so if you are a scalper um, and you do want to pick up on these sets um, I suggest that either one you don't buy out the entire store stock of the set and two um, if you are going to pick up this set in large numbers which based on how this set is selling I don't think this set will be worth very much in the near future anyway um, if you are going to do that um, I do suggest that you wait and I kindly ask that you wait um, until this set starts going starts retirement um, kind of starts getting on put on clearance and stuff um, and who knows that may never happen but um, please at least wait <laughs> at least a year um, until this set starts to kind of go off the shelves um, permanently due to retiring as a product, not due to people actually wanting it. So if you're a scalper, reseller, please chill out. Um, please let the people who actually want this set to actually, you know, enjoy the set, have it. Um, and then, you know, in a couple, in a year or so, maybe a year and a half when the set starts going out on retirement, then feel free to pick up this set. But until then, um, I, I kindly suggest and kindly ask that you wait and put a hold on picking up a bunch of these because I know a lot of people like me and people not like me want to get this set um, and it has been very hard to find this set. The set came out in August. I'm filming this video at the beginning of October which is just when I got one of these sets for the first time so um, again please wait um, if you want to pick up these sets to resell them you know wait until they wait until they start going on retirement don't ruin other people's fun because you just want to make money off a bunch of Lego sets that, you know, you're going to sell at, like, 500% of the cost that it was to buy them, so, um, yeah, I guess that's just my note to scalpers, I'm <laughs> just don't, please stop, let people who actually want the set to actually enjoy the set for its purpose buy it before you go out and scalp it, um, so, 
that is going to more or less conclude this review. Um, if you want to see a speed build as well as the extra pieces included in the set that is coming up right after this segment. Um, but other than that, um, as far as things go, I will be doing a comparison video between this set and the other ATRT sets um, to kind of see what those are like. Um, and I think I did another one. Of the, I think I did the last comparison last year when the 20th anniversary Clone Scout Walker came out. So that will be interesting to see how this set stacks up to that one. I mean, I've not decided yet, but I may also be doing a comparison video between the new and old clone troopers for the printing style in the Phase 2 version, so, um, yeah, don't know if I'll be doing that one yet, but if I do, stay tuned, um, otherwise, check back soon for the comparison video between this and the other ATRTs, so, um, other than that, um, that is going to do it for this review, um, thanks everybody so much for watching, and here is the speed build. extra pieces for the set are concerned this is the selection I will make a note that three of the four transparent red studs are extras for stud shooters um, other than that pretty nice selection um, as far as any standout pieces go um, this piece right here which is kind of the Baraki eye piece from Bionicle in light gray is nice as well as the black hole with the stud in it right here but none of these pieces are bad so pretty cool as far as the building experience went there were quite a few stickers to put on this set um, it is a grand total of 11 stickers for a 285 piece set, so quite a sizable amount, and some of the pieces have multiple stickers applied to them. Um, so, yeah, quite a lot of sticker, sticker application, but other than that, the building experience was nothing really out of the ordinary, and it was quite nice. So, 
That's going to do it for my review of the 75280 501st Legion Clone Trooper set. Thanks everybody so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.